Effective note taking is a skill that you can benefit from for the rest of your life. But have you been filling page after page in every lecture but feel it's hardly beneficial? Don't worry, I've been there too. But here's the good news, the quality of your notes can quickly change. In this video I'll show you by showcasing 5 typical mistakes, how to better prepare for tests, create notes that actually help you retain information and what to do with them after each lecture. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Mistake number one, you're not prepared. Have you ever wondered why some students seem to effortlessly keep track, while others struggle to follow despite diligent note-taking? Here's a crucial factor, preparation. Yes, that's right, effective note-taking starts even before you enter the lecture hall. But what does preparation mean specifically? Start by looking at the topics of the lecture in advance. If there are reading assignments, do them. And that means more than just skimming. Try to understand the key points and perhaps even formulate questions about them. Even if there are no prescribed texts, a quick Google search about the main concepts can work wonders. Preparation enables you to listen more actively during the lecture and place what is said in a broader context. Instead of frantically writing everything down, you can focus on capturing the most important points and their connections to each other. That's the difference between notes that are just an echo of the lecturer's words and those that reflect a deep understanding of the topic. So before you march into your next lecture, take some time for preparation. Mistake number two, you try to write down everything. Imagine sitting in a lecture, the professor speaking rapidly and you typing or writing furiously to capture every sentence. Sound familiar? Now the hard truth. This type of note taking will not get you far. Why? Because effective note taking is much more than a race against the lecturer's speaking speed. Many of us have internalized this. The more you write, the better. But reality is different. If you come out of a lecture with a notebook full of words but no idea what they actually mean, then you've missed the real purpose of note taking. It's not about being a human dictation machine. It's about filtering, understanding and contextualizing what you hear. Studies in cognitive psychology show that deep understanding of a topic often arises when we actively process information. This means paraphrasing it in your own words, making connections and thinking critically about it. This is where verbatim note-taking hits its limits. It requires little active processing, meaning the information stays only superficially in your memory. Mistake 3. You're not familiar with the best note-taking methods. The outline system. This is one of the simplest ways to take notes and it comes quite naturally to most of us. When making your outline notes, start by selecting four or five key points that will be covered in the lecture. Then write down some more details subheadings for each topic as the professor covers them. If you're making outline notes by hand, make sure to leave enough space on each page so you have plenty of room for all your subpoints. The outline system is a straightforward approach to note taking. It helps you keep up during the lecture and stay attentive, but it can still lead to trying to transcribe everything. So try to think along during the lecture and only note down really important subpoints. The Cornell method. This one is a pretty good way to structure your notes if you want to get the most out of your revision time. With this method, you divide your pad or notebook into three sections, notes, cues and summary. Your notes section is for the notes you make during the lecture. You can structure them however you want, but most people like to use the outline method that I just mentioned. Write your cues section either during or right after the lecture. This section can be filled with main points, literature references or potential exam questions. Your summary section can be written right after the lecture or later when you go through your notes again. Use this section to summarize the content in your own words, simply and understandably. 
The mind map is a great method for courses that deal with complex topics or abstract ideas. Use the mind map to understand how certain topics are interconnected. For example, take a lecture on business strategy. Start with the main concept in the middle of your mind map. From there, you could add different aspects like competitive analysis, marketing strategies, financial planning, HR management, or organizational development as branches. Under each of these main branches, you can then enter more specific elements, such as SWOT analysis under competitive analysis or budget planning under financial planning. When you revise your mind map later, add more detailed information, such as specific marketing techniques, case studies about successful business strategies or current trends in personal development. This creates a comprehensive and interconnected picture of how different aspects of business administration work together to form an effective business strategy. Let's face it, writing on lecture slides is no taking for lazy people. But that's totally fine. It's super effective and easy. If your professor is kind enough to provide the lecture slides in advance, download the files and print them out. The slides give you a head start in the outlining process. The professor has already done the work for you. All you need to do is make notes and expand on key concepts that are already presented in the slides. Later you can look at the slides and more or less remember what the professor said when discussing that slide. If you have a knack for aesthetics, like to draw or learn particularly well visually, then the bullet journal method could be the key for you. In a bullet journal, you turn a blank page into a vivid picture of your thoughts. It's ideal for combining different elements of other note-taking techniques. You could, for example, dedicate a page to your mind map, use another for your freeform notes and insert a small drawing in between. It's your bullet journal. Design it as you wish. But beware, if things go fast in the lecture, visually appealing note-taking can be a challenge. My tip? Use one of the previously discussed methods in the lecture and later incorporate your notes into your bullet journal. Not only does it look good, but it also helps you rethink the material. If you're looking for inspiration, platforms like Pinterest are a real paradise. Just enter Bujo ideas for students and let yourself be inspired. Of course, AI should not be missing from this list in 2024. Tools like Otter AI can take the tedious note taking for you and summarize each lecture. What falls away here is the memorization effect you get from writing with your hand, but it frees up a lot of time to be otherwise active during the lecture. For example, you could have AI transcribe the content while you focus entirely on creating a mind map. Please note that it is appropriate to ask the speaker's permission for this method out of consideration. Letting an AI listen in is a recording that could have negative consequences if done without asking. So just ask nicely at the beginning of the semester or session if it's a problem for the professor. Mistake 4. You're typing on a laptop. Digital note-taking apps are the superstars of app stores around the world. Programs like Notion, Evernote or Google Docs offer you endless possibilities. You can type quickly, easily restructure information and have the ability to incorporate digital content like links, images and videos. Another plus is accessibility via the cloud. Your notes are available everywhere as long as you have an internet connection. But beware, the risk of distraction is high. Social media, emails, online shopping, all just one click away. Also, typing on a keyboard can lead you thinking less about what you're actually writing. This can stand in the way of deep processing of the learning material. This was shown in the study The Pen is Mightier Than the Keyboard by Pam A. Müller and Daniel M. Oppenheimer. Their results show that students who take their notes by hand perform better in conceptual tests than those who type them on a laptop. So next time you sit in a lecture and waver between iPad and a notebook, I mean the one made of paper, think about this study. 
A little trick is to gift yourself an expensive pen. If a $100 pen is waiting in your bag, you might feel guilty if you don't use it. Before we get to mistake number five, please consider to give this video a like if you want to see more of this type of content. Five, you don't look at your notes until one week before the exam. Now that you have your notes and the lecture is over, how can you make the most of them? Repeat often, then create space. The first step after the lecture, sit down with your notes and go through them again. Best within the first 24 hours. It may sound like work, but it's worth it. This initial repetition ensures that what you've learned moves from short term to long term memory. Be sure to check out my tutorial on spaced repetition. A little bit daily can mean huge success. Try not to learn everything at once. Instead, take a page or two of your notes daily. Long term repetition ensures that what you've learned stays in your head.